Well, welcome everyone to the Spend Life Well Show, where we apply biblical wisdom to your financial journey. I'm certified kingdom advisor, Mark Trice. Happy New Year, everyone. In the uh, studio, we're joined today by Jesse Hamilton. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Now and you happy get to, New Year. You get to say Happy New Year as well, because it is the first day of the year. Maybe some of you are not up yet. 2024. It kind of sounds weird, doesn't it? It does, because I remember 1974. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, it's a new year, folks, and that means a time to uh, update your finances and, and start the new year right. That's right. A lot of people like to make changes during this time. We got New Year's resolutions, and my bet is that a, quite a few of them are financial related. Right. And I, you know, I'm not a big resolution person, but I am about setting a goal and following. So, whether it means doing it at the first of the year, which a lot of people do, or if it means any time of the year, you can do you can make those changes and implement them. That's right. Maybe um, the markets have scared you over the years and you failed to look at your statements last year. This would be a great time to pull those out and look at them. So to kick off the new year, Jesse, I thought we'd just kind of cover five things that you need to make sure you're checking up on as we start a new year. Okay. All right. So this is your fi- financial fitness checkup. I hope you've all had a wonderful holiday season selling the birth of, of our Lord and Savior of Jesus Christ, uh, time with fun and with family and friends, and now is the time to get serious about your finances. So let's jump right in, Jesse. What's the first point? So our first point today is revise your budget for the new year. And yes, I did say the B word, but that's okay. Budget? Right. Budget, mm-hmm. right? Or a spending plan, whatever you want to call it. The yep. point is, is that you want to make sure that you are taking control of every dollar of income that That's comes right. in, and you tell it where to go when it goes out. And this is much easier said than done. You might want to just keep it as simple as a pen and paper or a spreadsheet on your computer. There's lots of great apps out there. Uh, we, of course, recommend FaithFi, but there's some other good ones as well that can help you track these things. And some of them even link with your accounts and tell you where you spent your money. Yeah, and I think a number of things. I think the Ramsey organization is doing away with their budging app for 2024. Maybe they already have. I haven't looked. Um, my family, we use the FaithFi app. And mm-hmm. that's, my wife likes it. It's easier for her to keep up with. Um, so she uses that. You know, for me, I like spreadsheets and things. And for you, it might be the same. But I got to tell you, when it comes down to it, having a pen and pa- paper and writing everything down really does the trick for me. That's right. So we're looking at both uh, income and expenses as far as your spending plan. We want to know where those dollars went and what they were used for. And don't try to fudge your way through this. If you spent X number of dollars on the uh, restaurants this month, then write it down and, and don't. Yeah, lie don't, to yourself. don't try to hide from it. Yeah. Just, just it is what it is. It, you know, so that's one of the things we encourage people to do if you've never done a spending plan before, is simply write down what you're spending. Mm-hmm. It is not to be meant to be uh, a tool to chastise you in any way. This is something that's supposed to be done together if you're married or you um, uh, are in a situation where you may be sharing finances with someone else. But it's important just to write it down so that you know what you're spending. Here's some things that I think that would be practical for folks that are maybe just starting out this year with a resolution or a goal to to control their spending or at least understand what's going on. So simply writing it down can help you understand where you're spending your money. It's your money given to us by God, right? but it's your money to be a wise and faithful steward of those things. So it's important to start first to know exactly where you stand. Right. And be sure not to forget one of the major categories. We have people pretty often forget food or forget their rent and things like that. You got to make sure you hit all those categories and don't forget about other spending. If you're listening to this now, check out next week's episode. I'm giving everybody a teaser for the next week's episode. We are going to be going into budgeting detail and in greater specificity yes it'll be good yeah if if you'll knock your lights out for everything you want to know about preparing (laughs) a budget right it sounds exciting right i know you're waiting but you got to wait seven days before the next episode comes out (laughs) okay what's the second point jesse so audit and optimize your subscriptions ah this is a big one i mean i was surprised when i did this last summer so we are talking about everything from your uh streaming services 
um, whether you get other in-person services on a subscription basis, even look at uh, your your internet and your electricity bills. Uh, you can even check in on your mortgage and stuff like that, make sure it's all the way that you intend it to be. But we're specifically talking about those streaming services, right? Yeah, those are the ones that do it for me. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many subscription services we were paying for, not really realizing. It was like, when's the last time we looked at that or used right. that? I had one come up, um, and I didn't realize that I didn't even need to pay for it. It was for my <laughs> gaming console, and I was paying an extra $15 a month for a service that I don't use. And then I was still able to log in and play with my friends without paying the fee. Oh, so really? Stuff like wow. that. There you go. See? Yeah, you might find a different way. Because a lot of times, like, Apple TV will throw in a, a Paramount subscription or something. I'm right. just making these things up. I have no clue. This is where my kids and my wife come and tell me what to do. Uh, but, but yeah, you'd be surprised at the things that are overlooked there. And I know this saved a lot of money in our, our household by just simply cutting out a few of those streaming services. That's right. So that's important. Look at those things. You want to make sure that they're you're really using them. Um, you know, it used to be in the day, Jesse, it was about magazine subscriptions. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, you might have participated in that publisher's clearing house sweepstakes and signed up for a magazine or two and you really don't really need the the copy of uh, hunting outdoors and things <laughs> like that that you thought you would use. So take a moment to cancel those things. Mo Notice we didn't say cancel everything. This is audit. Right. So keep cancel and modify. And justify just, to yourself. Exactly. Hey, uh, yeah, I do and do enjoy getting this. Yeah, yeah or I, I really like this. watching this show, so it's worth the $8 a month or whatever. Now, now fellas, you got to treat your ladies right on this. If they like a subscription be wise just to let them do it. I mean, Probably. right? You know, and, and you maybe you can give up the extra subscription to the hunting channel. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to do that, but happy wife, happy life. That's right. All right. All right. Third option here, or third thing we want to point out for New Year's planning for financial checkups. All right. Prepare for tax season. It's coming up. Ah, and we need a we need a screaming <laughs> sound effect here for a our, our broadcast. Scream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And so, yeah, we got to prepare for tax season. Now, we have some really great clients that on January the 2nd, they've got all their tax information ready to go, and they're wanting to know when the 1099s from their accounts with us will come out. <laughs> and we have to tell them, it's like, okay, hold your horses. Thanks for being so organized. But organizing those tax documents now is going to save you a lot of time. Now, Jesse, I think, and I'll have to double check on this, I think that the IRS, which they'll tell us in January when they will start accepting mm -hmm. uh, returns for filing and stuff. The uh, For folks that have investment accounts, those 1099s, if there are any for you, probably won't come out until the very first of February, if not even the end of February. That's right. These companies generally have three different rounds of sending out the forms, and hopefully you're a part of the first round. But it might be towards the end of February before you even get that. Yeah. And then there's some that are even later, but we just tell you go ahead and file because it's not going to change. That's right. With that. But we'll, we can guide you if you're a client of ours, if you're concerned about that. So just start gathering that up. Start right. collecting you know, donations that you may have made by cash. Things like that will help you be more organized. And when it's time to start filing, are you submitting your um, information to a tax preparer? Or maybe use TurboTax online, something like that. You'll be ready to go, and it'll make tax season, number one, more efficient, but also, two, help you keep some money in your pocket. Right. If you're concerned about maybe doing your own taxes this year, you don't know when to switch to hiring a professional, give us our, our office a call. We'll give you some recommendations on if you're ready for that, if you need it, and maybe even a person to go to. Yeah, and we can help you in, in your local area where that be. All right, the fourth thing to basically for the new year to remember for our checkup today is what, Jesse? Declutter your financial life. Oh, decluttering. My wife will like this. Mm -hmm. So things can get very confusing and we get used to habits and things get cluttered very quickly, right? Yeah. And a lot of those things like, you know, I keep every receipt. And isn't that crazy? It is. I keep every receipt when I, when they're available to me digitally anywhere I use a credit card or debit card, mm -hmm. right? So maybe I don't need to, to do that. My wife would certainly appreciate it because she'd be having to, you know, 
the way we organize things is we have a big gallon size Ziploc bag and all the receipts that month go in there. And guess what? We almost never open it up. <laughs> <laughs> so declutter your financial life. Um, you, you, one way to do this is we recommend uh, no more than five years of, of records. Right. Uh, I think it's even three is what the IRS recommends for things, but five years is good. You know, keep a file box that's got maybe tax returns from previous years. Uh, but beyond three years, you really don't need a lot of the supporting documentation, Jesse. So of course, and you, we, we always recommend digitizing these documents as well. You know, any good programs for doing that? Find yourself a really good cloud-based um, storage area that's encrypted. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to name any specific names. Give us a call if you want to talk about it. But there are lots of good ones out there. And if you are a client of ours, we can provide you with one for free. Well, and I'll tell you that that Faith FaithFi app that's provided by what used to be called MoneyWise, it's really good about putting things into categories. And, mm-hmm. and that's one thing that we would recommend this year. If you don't track your expenses in a way that you can easily see, ah, we were talking about subscriptions earlier. Hey, I spent $100 in subscriptions this year. That's powerful information to help you shape your financial future it is. by knowing where you're spending money. It's great to do that. So so what if you get paper statements every month from your Roth IRA or whatever? Well, you know, and a lot of companies are charging for those now. Mm-hmm. So it would be good to try to get that as an email delivery of those statements. That way you can just save it on a computer, make sure you've got backup on that, you know, to a cloud storage or something. Yeah. One of the things that we always recommend from a security standpoint for our clients is to simply um, have a separate email that's for financial transactions only. And that's it. You don't give it out your email to Target or, or Walmart or anything like that. It's specifically for communication from your bank, your investment accounts, and things like that, because that it decreases the likelihood that you'll get a lot of spam and stuff. Right. So try to do that. And then the final um, goal for the year is, is Jesse, why don't you jump into our SMART goals? Yeah, so SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, achievable relevant, and time-based. Yep. So you want to set some of those goals, and this is how you set those goals. It's very specific. You can't say... Hey, I'd I'd like to get out of debt this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, it needs to be for specific. I need to uh, I need to be able to re- eliminate the use of a credit card and pay off the debt. You can measure it. You know how much debt's there. Right. You want to be able to say I can do that in six months, so it's achievable. It is relevant. Okay. You want to make sure that goal is relevant, and it's time bound. Right. You want to make sure that that I have have a specific time because if you if you don't, and Jesse, you can talk to this, if you don't set a goal and put a time range on it, it won't get done. Right. Everything from tasks around the office to personal finance, that's absolutely true. So let's just say, going back to part one, you've redone that budget, you've looked at your income, your take-home pay, you're saving money in your workplace plan or maybe an IRA or something, and you realize that you have an extra $1,000 a month. Hey, nice. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. So then maybe in six months from now. That's a lot of subscriptions. So that's <laughs> let's a just lot say of subscriptions. six months from now, um, your goal is that, hey, I want to have saved $6,000 because I could do $1,000 a month. That's measurable and time oriented. Yeah, it's very specific and we can measure it. It's achievable because now we have an extra $1,000 of free cash flow every month. Mm-hmm. It's relevant because you're going to have it for a specific use. Maybe it's just to build the emergency fund or take a summer vacation. Yep. And you know which time you're going to do that. All right. So remember those folks, set your SMART goals, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Okay. So folks, happy new year as we wrap up the first podcast of 2024. Uh, You know, today we talked about five main things for those financial fitness uh, in the new year. Revise that budget, audit and optimize any subscriptions get ready for tax season, let's declutter our financial lives, and then set those very oriented, specific oriented, smart goals for the new year. Exactly. Jesse, uh, happy new year to you. Happy new Thanks. year to our listeners. Uh, we encourage you to, to next week listen to our podcast on budgeting. Uh, but folks, we hope that your new year starts off right and you are blessed and your family is blessed. 
in this coming new year. From all of us at the Spin Wealth Well Show, thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next time.